Hi, I'm Diane Cooper. We're here at the Hourglass Art and Wine Gallery, and it is an honor for Stephen and I and the Hourglass family to introduce you to Dr. Kenneth Morris, our city mayor, Dennis Michael, and our very dear friend, the photographer of this very important exhibit, Stephen James Collins. Dr. Morris, who is the great, great, great grandson. That's right, three greats. Three greats, <laughs> wow, and two greats. Two greats. The three greats of uh, Frederick Douglass and the great, great grandson of Booker T. Washington. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for this exhibit, and we really appreciate you coming out and recognizing what is very, very important in our community to share and to let the community know what's going on here in Rancho Cucamonga and nationwide. So, Dr. Morris, could you please share a little about the exhibit here, please? Yes, well, first of all, I'd like to thank both of you for opening up your beautiful place uh, for this exhibit. I can't think of a better location to unveil this for the first time. Um, I was here, as you know, several months ago for an event and had the opportunity to meet you guys for the first time. And I think I mentioned to you that my friend Stephen James Collins was working on this art exhibit and we were looking for a location. And you said, please, please bring it here. And I was so pleased to hear that you guys had worked it out. So we're excited to be here. I am the president of the Frederick Douglass Family Foundation. Our mission is to raise awareness about human trafficking and modern day slavery and the way that we go about educating the public on the existence of this horrific crime is where education should start and that's with young people. We go into schools, mostly middle schools and high schools all around the country with a service learning curriculum to introduce them to the history of traditional state sanctioned slavery in this country and then we talk about the abolitionists, we talk about Frederick Douglass, the other great heroes and sheroes yes. that worked so hard and fought so hard for our freedoms and then we transition into this modern day human rights issue and that slavery still exists we need modern day abolitionists to communicate the inhumanity of slavery using the social media tools and networks that they're so familiar with to um, make sure that their community knows that this goes on and also to protect them because young girls in this country believe it or not the average age that a girl is enters or forced into teen prostitution is 13 years old. Wow. So we have a need to make sure that we get to our most vulnerable with this information to protect them. I'm going to turn it over to Stephen Collins because he is the inspiration behind everything that we're going to see tonight at this exhibit. Steve and I have known each other for 12 years and he came to me about a year ago with a napkin and a pencil and he said I have this idea about this image with you and your ancestors and he started scribbling it out on the napkin and here we are a year later with this beautiful incredible powerful compelling exhibit Stephen thank you thank you and it is thank you so much for I can't imagine a better location for me to thank have my you. first exhibit it's a surreal experience uh, coming from the the napkin as we said <laughs> uh, and, and I and I gotta say a lot of the spark for me was with Ken and, and his group and I learned a little bit about modern day slavery and human trafficking and and from there um, you know I, I started doing the research and started the reading and you know here we are a year later with you know we have 40 images in our collection uh, 21 are on the walls tonight and all the captions are there and it's uh, it's, it's just kind of a dream for me to come true so thank you for that um, it's you know, to have these images out there, I mean, our philosophy uh, with our group, philosophy uh, for, in, for global change and photography for global change is that the image is a gateway to awareness. And I'm on the front end of that, that process. And my goal in my job and what I think I'm good at is producing an image that catches people's attention. And they start asking questions. And what is that? And then they read the statistics and the caption and they learn. And oh, my God, I didn't know that. And then they become educated and then they become activists. Yeah. And at that point, in a sense, I hand them off to all the other people to do what they do so well. And, and all together, you know, we have a chance of getting rid of, of abolishing slavery in our lifetimes. Yes. So um, I'm on the front end of that and, and doing what I can do, you know, yes. from, from my end. So. Now, could you imagine that you would have your opening and the mayor would come out? No, yeah. that, that, that was the surreal part. <laughs> yeah. you know? Like uh, Kenny yeah. said, it started on a napkin and a concept, and his was the first You know, I, I would wow. have to say there's nothing surreal about me being here. Um, <laughs> our city account, uh, hall is right across the street from this location. Um, I've known both these fine 
folks that own the Hourglass Art and Wine Gallery for some time now, uh, we couldn't be more happy that you both are here tonight to raise the awareness of debt bondage, human trafficking. Um, I, most of us in government don't really recognize this. It's not raised to the level where everybody, it's, it's on the front burners, it's usually on the back burner. And tonight for me, uh, I've been overwhelmed and actually maybe even a little bit in tears looking at some of those girls inside that you have, have depicted about what actually is probably very, very real in the real life that these poor girls and boys are living. Um, that's my, that could be my granddaughter, uh, God forbid. But uh, thank you both for, um, Stephen and, and Diane, for, for hosting this event. But I, I must ask, Stephen, I must ask you a question and maybe even Dr. Collins. Um, I, I uh, excuse me, Dr. Morris, Dr. Morris. <laughs> Doc, I wasn't going to argue with it. <laughs> doctor, yeah. So I've just promoted the artist to a doctor and it's everything's cool. happening. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, uh, truly, uh, I, I just need to, to understand maybe a little bit for people that would be, want to watch this uh, wherever they're going to watch it is to what was your root inspiration that led you to say, I want to make a difference in this particular problem in our nation and in our world? Well, the spark was from Ken. I mean, I, that's where I learned about the cause. And I had uh, a, a moment where I got to a point, like a, I guess a critical mass of awareness. And uh, similar to Ken, I looked in my daughter's eyes. I have two daughters and they were 16 and 13 at the time. And, you know, with those images that you see tonight, you, you look at them and go, that could be my own daughter. Exactly. And it was something I couldn't turn away from. So, doctor, <laughs> what was your inspiration? What, 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 at the very beginning of your thought process, led you to where you're at today? Well, my inspiration initially came from my great ancestors, two of the greatest American heroes that this country we has We need ever to seen. say that again. We need to say Frederick, Booker T. Washington. Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington, yeah, two great American heroes that I have their blood flowing through my veins. But for me, this only happened maybe five years ago. A friend of mine handed me a National Geographic magazine, and the cover story was 21st Century Slaves. And I looked at that headline and I reacted the way I think most people do the first time they hear about the existence of human trafficking. And I thought slavery ended with the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, the work of Frederick Douglass and the abolitionists. But as I started to research the issue, I found that slavery still existed all over the world in every civilized and uncivilized country, including here in the United States, including right here in Rancho Cucamonga. And just like Steve said, I have two young daughters, and my daughters at the time were 12 and 9 years old. And when I found that there were girls that were my daughter's ages, and even oh. younger, that were forced to be sex slaves in the brothels of Southeast Asia, and that they were forced to service 25, 30 men a day, I could not look my oh girls my in the eyes and just walk away from this, especially because I have this platform that my ancestors have built through struggle and through sacrifice, and I knew I could stand up and do something about it. And just the opportunity, just like awareness was the key for me, had I not read that article, I'm sure that I would be doing what I'm doing, but I might not have started right away. So awareness is the key. When you look at these images, they're going to make people feel compelled to act and that's why this is so important so again we thank our host tonight because these these images are going to be here for the next three weeks so I hope that anybody that's listening will have an opportunity to come out and visit this beautiful place and to be able to experience this issue and affect change and I think that's important for me I know Monday morning when I go to City Hall I'm gonna be telling everybody you need to tell as many people as you can to at least walk into the Hourglass Art and Wine Gallery and take a look at, at, at your exhibit that's so compelling, so powerful. And, and for you, your ancestors yeah. are looking down right now and saying, you know what, the, yes. the doctor's doing a great job. <laughs> I feel he's it. Doing, <laughs> Dr. Morris is doing an incredible job. In fact, I he's taking it. this to another level, but I, uh, that is pretty incredible. Yeah, Pre pretty it certainly incredible. is. And uh, I, on behalf of the city of Rancho Cucamonga and all our residents, we can't thank you, Doctor, and you, Stephen, enough 
for coming to our city to allow us to showcase this exhibit and uh, I will do whatever I can to spread the word for the next three weeks so people can come in here and learn a little bit more because I've just spent probably 10 minutes looking and I've learned more about this subject than I've ever learned in my entire lifetime. So thank you so, so very much. Thank you, thank you Mayor. We thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. You, uh, you honor us with your presence and uh, we hope that uh, we, we share in your hope that the awareness will be uh, raised mm -hmm. and increased and pe people will be educated to, uh, to identify the, 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 trace, the traces of it and to, uh, to govern themselves accordingly to, to, to bring the matters to the proper uh, justice. Thank you guys for being here. Our pleasure. Yes, thank you again, and we welcome you to please come out and view this exhibit. It will be here for three weeks till the 9th of June here in the city of Rancho Cucamonga at the Hourglass Art and Wine Gallery. Thank you.